Welcome to On the Bench, a recruiting-centric episode. I am your host for this episode, trying to keep his you-know-what together because I'm on my eighth cup of coffee today and the energy is emanating out of me. It's me trying to be professional. Brendan Sinone. Hello, Zachary. Hello. Hello. All right. Enough with that. Uh, Let's get into it. Recruiting-based episode here of On the Bench, Zach. There is a ton to get to. Uh, There's always a good amount to get to, but this one is particularly... Uh, scoop filled and and a lot of good information coming up. FSU is kind of circling and and trying to trend for major recruit in LJ McRae. We have a ton of prospects who are going to be on campus for a primetime game against Duke this weekend. So there's a lot happening. Before we get into that, uh, a hat tip to our sponsor, Chattanooga Whiskey, the best craft distillery in the game, period. They are exquisite at what they do unique, transparent, uh, diverse with the d- different type of whiskeys they offer. Oh, did you hear that stutter, Zach? That's the uh, the caffeine starting to set in a little bit. I heard it. Mm. Sure no one else noticed. Uh, but but so Chattanooga Whiskey, phenomenal product. Proud to, to have them as our sponsor. Proud to have ample bottles on my shelf of Chattanooga Whiskey. You can find them throughout the state of Florida, throughout the Southeast. They're all over the place. Their experimental distillery in downtown Chattanooga is, or sorry, Midtown Chattanooga. Awesome. So good. Such a great product. Let's get into it, Zach. Let's start off with LJ McRae. He is a recently uh, a five-star defensive lineman ranked uh, by 24-7 Sports, number six prospect nationally. He had a major bump, someone that Chris Nee has loved for a long time, six foot six, 260 pounds from Daytona Beach, mainland. FSU hosted him on an official visit a couple of weekends ago. You had reported that FSU made up some ground. And as we're getting into his decision day on Saturday coming up here, Zach, what are you hearing about the, the other ground uh, or the rest of the ground that FSU has made up? Or are they leading? What, what's happening? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of buzz about that today with the LJ McCray recruitment. Uh, Steve Wolfong of 24-7 Sports, the director of recruiting here, made a report on Knowles247.com. You can read the whole thing. Um, but essentially the overall point is that FSU is positioned well in this recruitment with about five days to go until McRae goes public with a decision on Saturday. The time for that decision is not yet known. Uh, maybe by the time this is posted, we'll, we'll know. But um, as of right now, don't know exact timing for when he's announcing. As far as what I'm feeling, mm-hmm. I think FSU has become – a very real threat to land LJ McRae. Um, I kind of said this, you know, in, in some reporting over the last week or so that, you know, them FSU being a real threat in this recruitment is not something I could have said, you know, a month ago or, or maybe even a few weeks ago. Well, I, I, why Zach, what's changed? Why, why has Florida state become this, this threat beyond the official visit? I know it's part of it, but like, what else? Yeah. I mean, every official visit's going to go well for the most part. Yeah. Um, there's been one or two that, that happened. Yeah, that I said that's what I said for the most yeah. part. But but yeah, I think uh, you know most official official visits go well. So you know that FSU knocks it out of the park. Um, but there's a few other factors that that have led FSU into this top group within LJ McRae's recruitment. Okay. One being that defensive line coach, longtime defensive line coach at Florida State, Odell Hagens, has taken a more prominent role in this recruitment over the last month or so. That's gone over well with McRae and his family. They respect mm-hmm. Hagens a lot. I mean, obviously, he's done a ton um, to put a bunch of defensive linemen in the league during his tenure as Florida State's interior defensive line coach. And, you know, he this year, he is a, another strong group that have, uh, you know, shown out, especially recently. Um, I think, you know, FSU's success on the field has really propelled themselves into the top part of this recruitment. Um, I reported today that, that you know, I'm checking in with some sources. I felt Georgia was FSU's biggest competition, um, you know, on, on Monday evening. That's kind of what I've been hearing. I still think the other three schools are in the mix with Florida, Miami, and Auburn. You know, Florida's kind of been that school that's uh, had the momentum in this recruitment for a while. I have not heard as much about them this week. But on their side of things, you know, I checked in with with Blake Alderman of, of the Swamp 247 site, um, and it seems like they still feel good. So I don't think that LJ McRae has given any school direct indication that he's going to that school. But the conversations that Florida State has had with McRae and his 
family over the past week or so have been very positive. And I think that's why you're seeing some people turn to, to FSU being the top school or one of the top schools in this recruitment as things dwindle down. Is this kind of like, so I've had a little bit of this vibe, uh, Zach, of maybe KJ Bolden recruitment even a, a year ago with uh, Lucas Simmons. Like when when you start talking with other sources uh, beyond the FSU scope or even just other people like within our network, when the same team kind of keeps popping up over and over again as like a legit like comp, like level of competition for for the other program, uh, that seems to be telling, right? Is, is that, yeah. are you getting that I kind mean, of trend here? Honest, honestly, it hasn't gotten to that point for me. I think okay. it will over the course of this week though. Like I think as, as schools kind of figure out where they are in the pecking order of McRae's recruitment um, in, the, in these final five or four days um, leading up to Saturday, I think we're going to hear more about, hey, you know, maybe Florida State's that, that team we have to worry about the most. Um, right now, I think everyone kind of thinks it's FSU, Florida, Georgia to the top. And then Miami feels like kind of like the sleeper school. Um, they still still feel like they're involved in this recruitment, heavily involved. And then Auburn's kind of, you know, still involved. Um, but that's kind of a wait and see. So, we'll, you know, I haven't heard like, yeah, I haven't heard a ton like about like other schools mentioning Florida State as the biggest threat, honestly. Um, but like I said, I think that's going to come over the course of this week if things continue to trend in that direction. Hmm. Is worth noting a few things here. Uh, the five schools that Zach mentioned with, with varying levels of, of confidence uh, are the five schools that he's officially visited. FSU is the lone school that he's officially visited in season. Everything else was June. Florida State was in October. Strategic uh, to do it around the time he was planning to commit. You also mentioned, Zach, like there is a, like difficult for a lot of teams uh, recruiting people such as ourselves like to read the tea leaves of for this lj mccray recruitment yeah. i feel like that's kind of because of his his family dynamic and uh, a mature like football family in that regard yeah. does that make sense yeah i mean his dad is a former coach at bethune cookman he understands the recruiting game um and i think that's like you said largely the reason why this has been such a buttoned up recruitment really hasn't been you know, besides over the summer and during the off season, like people saying, hey, you know, Florida and Georgia are the top two schools for him. Well, if you just follow the visit trends, like those are the schools he saw the most. So to me, yeah, I agree with you. I think the family dynamic um, creates a, you know, a well-run recruitment um, with McRae. And it's one that, you know, a lot of not a lot of people have a very, very clear um, indication towards any school. Uh, as of right now. So for, for context of like how important LJ McRae is for Florida State, we've talked about him being important, but like I want to play, I want to play a game of Byers to Known sponsored by the Turner Group. Byers, and this is going to put into context just how important I, I think we think he is. Byers to Known, LJ, LJ McRae is more important for Florida State's class than Jeremiah Smith. I think it's an easy buy. I think Jeremiah easy Smith. Buy. Yeah, I think Jeremiah Smith is a generational wide receiver prospect. But I just saw someone bring this up. I think it was on our board. Georgia didn't win two back-to-back -back national championships in a row by having generational wide receiver prospects. They dominated other teams in the trenches with their, you know, elite level defensive line. And FSU to this point in the recruiting cycle does not have an elite defensive lineman committed. They didn't have one last year either through the high school ranks. Obviously, we've seen what they've done in the portal. It's impressive. They have not recruited the D-line position well enough in the high school ranks. Landing LJ McRae would immediately alleviate that. You know, He's an end for them, a defensive end. They still probably need to add one more in, uh, you know, defensive tackle in this class. There are a few guys that they're trying to work on at that position. But, man, LJ McRae is the number two defensive lineman in the, in the nation in those updated rankings, the number six player overall, he'd immediately be the top player in the class. I just, I think defensive line is just so much more important of a position than wide receiver, in my opinion. Let's, I mean, I think I'm, I think it's an own, like, I think I'm opposite. Like I think Jeremiah Smith, because he is so like prodigious and, and unique, like, like I, I have to lean towards like the generational talent potentially. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, but I understand like, 
there is this balancing act of when I think you're trying to figure out like allocation of resources and prioritizing like how much time you're spending on a guy like need is important positional value is important um talent is important and Jeremiah Smith is the number one player in the country now yeah. at this point but like Elgin McCray isn't far off. And I don't know, maybe as I'm rambling and taking your point, Zach, with like multiple years of like not elite defensive line recruiting, uh, if you want to throw in the need at a premium position, I, I guess you could convince me. You know what? Bye. I changed my mind. We're both in our agreement now. Copier. Mm. Do you want to move on to our next segment? Let's do it. Okay. So FSU, Duke, 7.30 p.m. Saturday, top 25 matchup. Expected to be a really good atmosphere at Doak Campbell Stadium. To be fair, a lot of really good atmosphere these days. Really cool to be in Tallahassee and experiencing uh, that buzz around Florida State and around the campus, the entire community. Like that, that, such a cool city when the football team's good because people care. And because of that, you're able to put on a marquee event uh, from a recruiting perspective with having a bunch of recruits. We've talked about this before. Like the FSU had a bit of a I guess Lowell would maybe be the right way to, to describe it in the beginning of the year, despite some really good success on the field. Marquee wins over LSU, Clemson. That's because you only had one home game. It was a yeah. primetime game, but it was against Southern Miss. You have a bye week, and now all of a sudden you're getting this stretch of October here where you're kind of gearing up to this big pinnacle like recruiting event. Uh, you had a primetime game two weeks ago. You had a noon game last week. Now here you go, legitimate top 25 matchup. ABC, like this is a game that people want to go to and to to see, to take in. That includes recruits. So we're going to get into who's coming in this weekend. Uh, before we get to that, real quick, shout out to our sponsor for this segment, Football Coach College Dynasty. Uh, on the Bench is brought to you by Football Coach College Dynasty with a 95% positive rating on Steam. Steam. Football Coach, colon, College Dynasty is the ultimate college football Management game for PC. Uh, you can be a coach. You can create game plans. Uh, you can go ahead and recruit a bunch of players from junior college to high school ranks. And then you can go into the transfer portal. You can drop NIL bags. Uh, you can host different like official visits, unofficials, get them to camp and scout them. Like there, there is a ton of depth and intricacies to this game. It is a lot of fun. It is a great time warp. You will lose a lot of time playing it, but in the best way possible. So you want to get in, into your like your football fix. Uh, beyond just listening to our podcast or watching games on TV, maybe pull up the laptop while you're doing all that. Football Coach College Genesee is available now on Steam for $15. Whew. All right, Zach, big weekend coming up here. Um, we're dropping different tidbits and stuff throughout the week on Knowles247.com. Really recommend you guys to go check out all the stuff for VIP customers that we're putting up there. Uh, for now, like we don't want to give away everything, Zach. What, what would you say like, has been the biggest development to date for the recruiting weekend as we're discussing uh, this on what was it Tuesday at four o'clock? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a ton of blue chip guys in both the 24 and 25 classes as well as 2026. I think there are a few notable storylines. Um, Charles Lester, it'll be his first game visit to Florida state in Tallahassee this season. He tweeted that he's going to be here this weekend. That's a big deal because he did visit UF earlier on in the season and he's continuing to say that that you know he's hearing from UF and that he's likely going to be back there at some point. So it'll be big for Florida State to get him back on campus, try to secure that uh, commitment. And then there's a number of flip targets in the 2024 class that'll be on campus. Um, two on the defensive line, Artavis Jones, the Miami commit. He was on campus last weekend. He'll be back this weekend. At least that's what he said. We talked to him after the game, after the Syracuse game. And, um, you know, that's the expectation, though, is that that he's on campus. And then a new addition today, um, this is, a you know, Nasir Johnson, four-star defensive lineman committed to Florida. That's a big guy, development. Yeah. He's a guy that, that I've been hearing was going to visit for the Duke game. I had not confirmed it until today when he told uh, Blake Alderman of Song 247 that he'll be on campus. He's a guy that's rised a ton in the rankings. Um, he was an unranked recruit when uh, FSU – was the first program to offer him a scholarship back in January. He then jumped into the top 247 um, in May. And then in the most recent update this week, he is now the number 74 overall prospect and the number 13 defensive lineman in the country. So a top 100 talent, he told 24-7 um, Sports that he'll be at FSU this weekend. Last week, 
in an interview with Ben Woke of our Georgia site, he said that FSU outside of UF was the school pushing hardest for him um, to flip him at that point in time. I think Georgia's actually turned up the heat with him since. They got him on campus last weekend, and since then they've kind of um, ramped things up, especially after they lost out on Aiden Breland, the five-star defensive lineman, to Oregon last week. Yeah, that's an interesting development, uh, Georgia's interest in uh, – I'm not sure because LG McRae is an edge player, but in Georgia's scheme, like probably someone who's valuable and, and can move across different spots. And, and same thing for Florida State. It's like he's talented and, and big enough to play multiple positions up front. Um, but I am interested in, like, their board expanding. Is it because they lost uh, the, the kid to Oregon, or is it uh, because they're bracing for LJ McRae? Is it maybe both? Is it neither? We don't know. That is an aspect that we're following. Uh, for other stuff that we're chasing this weekend, Zach, you don't have to name names, but, like, how much do you think is still, like, trying to get confirmed? Like, wh what are we still working to confirm and chase as a, as a network? Are there any more surprises or things that we're trying to get tied down here in the next few days? Yeah, I mean, there could be a few other uh, flip targets on campus. Jaden Perlo is a guy that told me a few weeks ago on um, the Georgia commit. He's a four-star linebacker committed to Georgia in the 25 class. He told me a few weeks ago that he's planning to be at FSU for the Duke game. We'll see if he does indeed make it. Sometimes he says he's going to visit somewhere and then doesn't actually make it. Um, I still have a crystal ball lock for FSU in that recruitment. So we'll see kind of if he shows up. And then there could be a few other guys that I think we could add over the course of the week. Um, we should know, you know, the complete list of, you know, who FSU is expecting on campus on Thursday or so. And then, you know, we'll kind of work over the weekend to see if there's any surprise visitors that they're trying to add. Hmm. Uh, can I address two things that have been annoying me this entire podcast, but I did not want to address them earlier on in case other people hadn't noticed. And so now it might annoy them. Go ahead. All right. One is, I don't know if you can hear it, but neighbor across the street getting a new roof. And so there's a constant banging. You guys may not be able to hear it. Kid show. That's a good thing, but it's annoying me. Number two, Zach, the, the clock behind you blinking the entire time. Uh, just set the clock. What's happening there? Just pay attention. Well, it's not my fault. There's a blinking light. I'm going to block it now. Thank you. Good. Good. I'm sure at least one other person noticed that and was perturbed by it. Now everyone else is going to notice it. Uh, before we move to our next and final segment, uh, there's been chatter out there and uh, some, I guess it's fair to say like re reporting, but conversation about FSU potentially looking at a 2025 Miami commitment defensive tackle Armando Blunt, one of the best prospects in the 2025 class from down in South Florida, Miami area, Zach. Is there anything we want to discuss on that? Uh, yeah, do we want to discuss that at all? No. Okay. All right. We won't discuss it right now. That's fine. Uh, finally, let's move on to our Buy or Sinone segment. Who sponsors that? The Turner Group. The Turner Group. You don't want to Sinone on entering the housing market just because you're like, ah, the housing market. Uh, you can actually have a pleasant experience with someone who's trustworthy, who's going to work really hard for you, who's well connected. That's Colin and Amy Turner of the Turner Group. Nailed it. There we go. Uh, they, they are very experienced. They are well connected, can help you throughout not just Central Florida. That's where Colin's based out of the Winter Park area. Uh, hands on right there. But they have people throughout the state of Florida. They're under the Keller Williams umbrella, which is obviously a huge realty company. So like they have the ability to help you throughout the state. Uh, if you're considering entering the market, reach out to the Turner Group, or you can even reach out to me over DM, PM. I can help connect you guys, whatever. I know it's a daunting process. doesn't have to be the, like a, a frustrated one. So the Turner Group. All right. By Orson Own, Zach. FSU gets at least two commitments by the end of the month of October. Um. Can you extend it a few weeks? No, I mean, I'm going to say known. Okay. I think they get one. Ooh. You want to do a show crystal ball? You don't have to. It's fine. No. Okay. All right. Buy or Sinone. What's your ranking of the defensive tackle board? Personally, I like Nasir Johnson the best. Um, the four-star D lineman committed to Florida. And then I like Artavius Jones, the Miami defensive line commit, and then Denos White. So I guess in order of ranking, uh, 
on on twenty four seven sports. Yeah, how original. Yeah, I just I like the frame on this year. He's six foot four uh, and a half, and then three hundred pounds, and you know he can do a backflip and moves extremely well. And then Artavius Jones, a little bit stockier build, but a guy that um, I think if he builds on his motor a little bit, it'll be a uh, a more complete product there. Um, you know, want to see some growth in his game. And then Denos White's a more, you know, nose tackle type, um, you know, bigger body, but but definitely a guy that can slim down a little bit and become a, uh, a, a dominant player at the next level. An oldie but a goodie by Orsinone. FSU finishes with a top five class in the 2024 cycle. I'm going to buy. I mean, the guys that we think they have a – good shot at landing um, are pretty highly ranked. They're really only in it for guys that are highly ranked at this point in the process. Like they're, they're looking at two, three, four more guys in this class. And I don't think they're going to be reaching much. Um, and, you know, I really, I really like where FSU stands for some of their top remaining targets. So yeah, I'll do top five. All right. Could I, could I interest you in a top three by Arsenal? Also known that. By Orson known top four. Oh, my God. Um, that's all I have for By Orson known, sponsored by? The Turner Group. Do you have any? <sighs> By Orson known. By Orson known the clock behind me. Uh, Sinone, that's embarrassing that you've allowed that to happen. Um, the power went out when I was out in Tallahassee over the weekend. It's so Tuesday. I, I haven't had a chance to... You, you dragged me on this podcast when I was in the middle of fixing it. Mm. I'll be honest. When our power goes out, I always just let my wife fix the clock because I'm too lazy to. So I'm just being a hypocrite right now. Uh, all right. I think that's everything for recruiting right now. It seems like FSU is trying to put the finishing touches on its 2024 class. Really cool that you're that far ahead uh, of, of schedule right now. Like you're probably talking about a board of like 10 ish guys, maybe, you know, give or take a few, but like it's getting very narrowed down and, FSU for the most part is like in on on the bluest of blue chip prospects so like that that is cool uh, stick with Knowles twenty four seven and on the bench throughout the remainder of this cycle we'll keep you posted as best as we can as routinely as we can uh, some housekeeping real quick the rest of the week we are planning to do a mid year kind of check in podcast episode with Chris Sack and myself uh, kind of just talking about where FSU is at at six and zero. Oh. This season and like what the the next uh, stretch, the final half of the season looks like. Uh, we will do a Duke preview and we will have a Duke centric uh, scouting report type of deal with Noel the enemy as well. So a, a busy week still. We're recording this on Tuesday. Should be listening to it by Tuesday evening, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Probably gonna have some elements of podcasting as well. So on the bench where you can find all your FSU news, Noel's twenty four seven. You can find the best behind the scenes VIP news about Florida State football in the entire world. Uh, for Zach Blostein, I'm Brendan Sinone. This has been On the Bench. We will talk to you guys later this week.